This is Lauren Elliott from PNN, and today we've got Doug Stoop, who is currently leading two Brits, James Fox and Richard Dunwoody, on a trek across Antarctica. He's actually trying to be one of the few that have made that trek unsupported, which means no supplies dropped in ahead of time, taking a route that was mapped uh, years ago by Shackleton, uh, who attempted it in the early 1900s. Shackleton's trip was cut short with the destruction of his ship, the Endurance. Doug's leading the expedition, hiking about 10 miles a day, hauling sleds that weigh 250 pounds apiece. Our interview today is a live interview conducted between two kids in Mississippi. The two kids are being taught at home and are taking a class called Junior Medical School, taught by Bob Barboza. And we'll listen in as they ask Doug all the questions about how to take care of himself on his journey. Great to hear from you. What I'm going to do... Uh, Doug is introduced. I'm going to quickly connect you with two kids who have questions for their classroom. Uh, their names are Matt and Michael Thorne, so they'll be right on the line in a second. Hold on. Okay, super. Hello? Okay, Matt, this is Lauren. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, you'll notice there's a little bit of a lag time in the conversation because it's a long ways away. Okay, here we go. All right, uh, Doug, on the line are, are Matt and Michael Thorne. Uh, Matt's in grade 9, he's age 14, and Michael's his younger brother, age 11, from grade 6. So I'll just introduce you two and, and let you ask your questions, guys. All right, well, let me just give them a little briefing first, okay? Please. Is that okay? Yes, well, please. Well, today uh, we we had a beautiful day. Have you guys been following the, the website? We have. Awesome. Well, we've uh, we've skied quite a bit from the coast all the way, and we just today passed the 83rd parallel. We've done almost 200 miles, and we still have 400 miles to go. And uh, the temperatures today were were actually quite quite warm, uh, minus 16 degrees Celsius, which is approximately about minus 12 or 10 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And uh, the wind chill is a little bit more than that. Wind chill was probably about minus uh, 14 Fahrenheit. But we have be- we've had like four days of just beautiful weather, suns out and just sparkling, and really, uh, you know, a part of the Antarctic that I really fell in love with. But there's nothing living up here. We haven't seen any birds or anything living uh, in the interior. All the all the wildlife is by the coast, and uh, we have climbed um, almost 5,800 feet. And we're at that elevation, and the uh, the effect of altitude is much higher. So a couple of us, I'm sitting in the tent with uh, Richard and James, and uh, Richard felt the altitude a little bit today, and because uh, the effect of altitude is almost seven or eight thousand feet. So he's feeling a little bit of uh, altitude, and so am I. But we really had an amazing day. Well, the whole team is in great spirits. We passed the 83rd parallel today, and uh, we're doing good. We we do uh, realize we have a long way to go. And uh, but uh, we're we're enjoying each step of the way and uh, keep on going. And tomorrow it's a very uh, routine type of thing where every day we get up and we do we cook our uh, we boil water and make sure we eat enough and we get out of the tent at 8:30 and we start marching uh, t- south toward the pole. Please explain the solar energy you are using. Uh, solar energy we use um, a solar panel. And what we do is we have all, like, cigarette lighters that just attach to the solar panel, and we're able to charge all our technology uh, to send pictures, uh, all our cameras, all that kind of stuff. And uh, the sun is so powerful here that uh, a lot of the iPods and, and some of the stuff gets charged fairly quickly. And I can actually set it up on my sled while we're moving to charge during the day, and then at night we can uh, just rotate the solar panel um sort of around the tent as the sun comes around uh, during the evening. What effect does the altitude have on your health? Well, um, the altitude definitely has, but I do, these really long journeys uh, tend to, uh, because you lose so much weight, uh, you do, uh, your body tends to get uh, quite quite abused, Um, not only from the weather, from the skin, everything has to be protected, but you get uh, back aches and your knees start hurting, and uh, I'm getting old, so uh, it's, uh, I'm a little bit sore right now. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be able to, to be able to withstand all the little aches and pains, and we can continue on and uh, keep getting. Hopefully, we'll be standing at the pole uh, in the mid-January. How did you acclimatize yourself to the weather and conditions? 
Well, it's funny. Uh, your body is really resilient, uh, and it does uh, uh, adjust quite quickly to the cold. And I think by now we've been here 18 days. We've adjusted quite what, quite well to the cold, um, and uh, your body uh, will adjust quite well in the altitude where we seem to be uh, to climbing at a slow rate. So that's the best way to acclimatize. We're not getting dropped off at at 9,000 feet. So. Uh, we're slowly working our way up. We're at 5,800, and we started at the coast, so that's pretty good. But we're um, every day is a new day, and hopefully we won't be too affected by the altitude. What special equipment did you take? Uh, there's all kinds of special equipment that we have uh, for polar adventures. Um, it's really all about the food and fuel. We just need to bring food and fuel and uh, some clothing, a tent, uh, sleeping pads, sleeping bags. Uh, I did bring a climbing rope in case there was some crevasses and uh, also some crampons or skis, but there's constantly things breaking and we have to repair things all the time, so I have a repair kit. Um, so there is a, a gear list that I usually uh, go over and, and bring and, and itemize everything and check it twice and make sure it doesn't weigh too much because we have to carry everything. We're totally self-sufficient and we're unsupported, so there's only been about 30 other people that have gone unsupported from the coast to the pole. So uh, being an international polar year, uh, it's great. Uh, I don't know if you know the story about Ernest Shackleton, but um, we're attempting a journey that he was going to do in 1916. And uh, you, if you read about it on the website, it gives you a little bit more information. But you guys should read the book by Alfred Lansing called Endurance because it's an amazing book. Has the cold ruined any camera equipment? No, it's been pretty good. The camera equipment, all the batteries get uh, get chewed up a little bit quicker, but all our camera equipment's been really good. And like I said, it's a very dry climate. I have a lot more trouble up on the North Pole with the moisture, um, but uh, camera equipment's been pretty good. Knock on wood. What are you planning to do for Christmas? We'll be skiing for Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> we ski almost every day, so. Uh, yeah, no, no real difference. It's really just a routine. We get up and we get uh, get going, and um, unless uh, we get a really bad storm and we're tent bound, um, you know, we might deserve a, a break or something like that. But I doubt it. I'll bet we'll be skiing on Christmas. Is it hard to set up camp, and how long does it take? Uh, the camp is set up very quickly. I have a very efficient tunnel tent that can be set up in probably about four or five minutes. Um, and then it just takes a, a few minutes for us to put snow around the snow valances, they're called, which uh, keep the no wind from getting up underneath the tent. And then we have to put together uh, a few um, uh, snow blocks for, uh, to make sure uh, that there's no snow, that we have snow for, for melting. And just unload our sleds everywhere and do all that, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't take that long, probably a half hour by the time we're all in the tent and have our boots off and sort of enjoying it. Has anyone had any medical issues? No, we're all feeling pretty good. I mean, nothing unusual. I mean, we're all a little bit sore, just from pulling heavy sleds. I mean, like I said, 250 pounds for the last 18 days definitely is uh, wears on the body a little bit. But uh, we're all feeling pretty good. Shackleton had food drop planned, do you? Um, Shackleton uh, had some food drops uh, that he put out. And he had another team um, from McMurdo that put out food, food drops for him because he was going to try to do a complete crossing. And we don't have any food drops. We, everything that we uh, took with us, uh, we uh, were carrying with us um, on our uh, in our sleds, and uh, we plan on doing, going unsupported. Why do you measure nautical miles? Uh, why do we measure nautical miles? Mainly because of the degree, because there's 60 nautical miles in each degree, and so uh, that's what uh, mostly the planes and people in Antarctica measure everything by nautical miles rather than statute miles or kilometers. Well, thank you for your time. Merry, Merry Christmas, and God keep you safe.